Now, from the makers of Cold Water Irma... The sign reading British Cipher Headquarters, no admittance without authority, hung next to the sentry box outside the large red brick building. A guard stood stiffly to attention in the time-honored tradition. It was raining, not pouring down, but a steady drizzle, the sort of rain that gently soaks one to the skin. The winter morning was a quiet one, no sound of traffic from the deserted road. And then... From the inner courtyard stumbled a man, well-built, well-dressed. He ran in panic from the main building across the yard towards the guard who paid no attention to his cries. Nearing the gate, a small van swung towards him. No! 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 From the van, a man in a white coat stretched out an arm. In his hand, he held a blunt-nosed pistol with a silencer attached. He fired. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Over a million South African housewives are delighted with the sparkling clean wash they get from cold water Omo. Like Mrs. Connie Goldie of the Innocent. Well, I found myself without any hot water one Monday morning. Yes. So I dashed out and I bought a packet of cold water Omo. And I've never been without cold water Omo since. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Walls Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We've got strawberry and vanilla, half and half. That's our new sight. White milky chocolate the way you like. All over the outside, we're Walls Pink Pussycat. Oh. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel find themselves assigned to a case which becomes known as the Super Secret Cipher Snatch. Roger Jarrett yelled as the bullet smashed into his body. He fell untidily into a puddle. Blood flowed into the water as he died. From the van bearing the sign Classy Glass Cleaning, two men climbed down. They moved swiftly, picking up the body and throwing it callously into the back of the van. You will let him taken care of. Come on, let's go. And all the time, the guard on duty stood with his eyes straight in front of him, unseeing and unhearing, stiff to attention. The van pulled away, vanished down the empty street. Time passed. And along that same street came a large black limousine. It stopped at the entrance. From the wheel, George Webster, dignified director of British Cipher headquarters, leaned from the window and said to the guard, Hello, masters. What kind of day has it been? Oh, usual Monday, Mr. Webster. Routine, boring. Yeah, that's the reply I like to hear. In other words, no one has stolen the secret papers. Uh, no chance, sir. No chance. Good. <laughs> No, no, no chance. Nothing ever happens in this place. Routine and boring. That's all it is. Routine and boring. In John Steed's apartment, Mother was holding a meeting. Only three people were present. John Steed, Emma Peel, and Mother. Of course, I considered it all terribly carefully before I said yes. Of course, Of course, of course Mother. Uh, then, MI-12 got in touch and asked for our cooperation. I was, of course, a little inclined to tell them to conduct their own business in their usual inefficient manner and allow us to go on solving everything that we were given. But... But? But? But. 
Well, it goes without saying that just to be asked <laughs> is a compliment. Quite. Quite. A feather in our caps, in fact. No, more than one. A whole nestful. An Indian headdress. A mattress. I knew you'd be inclined to lie down on the job, Steed. It's also a thundering great bore. I mean, I ask you, am I 12 losing one of their men like that and then having the audacity to ask us to find him? It is annoying. Infuriating. Well, that's what I said, but, uh... But? Uh, pour another cocktail, Steed, and I'll tell you all. Miss mm. Field? I think not. One of us has to remember what this is all about. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, now, yes. <clears throat> mm. Cheers. Mm. To another case successfully accomplished. Uh, we have to start on it yet. Foregone conclusion, Steed. Foregone conclusion. Roger Jarrett. Uh, that was his name? I mean, is his name? It could be was. In fact, it sounds like was. Yes, that's the name. How long has he been missing? 24 hours. Hmm. That's MI-12 for you. Complete panic. Typical of them. They have such a terrible preoccupation with gimmicks and gadgets. I told them. No gadget will ever replace the man. Or the woman. <coughs> yes. Uh, where does all this start, Mother? It starts in the apartment of Roger Jarrett, of course, shortly after he left it. And ends? At the Cypher headquarters. Right. Then I'll take Jarrett's apartment. And I'll brush up on the Cypher's. And I'll sit here and have another cocktail and wish you both <laughs> the best of British luck. <laughs> An hour later, John Steed drove his rolls into the yard of the British Cipher headquarters and parked it under the sign that read, Strictly No Parking. Always start in the proper manner. Train him early. Steed tapped his bowler more firmly on his head and, jauntily swinging his umbrella, strolled up the steps and into the reception foyer. Ten minutes later, he was shown into the very plush suite of the chairman, George Webster, who rose from behind the desk. Steed, isn't it? Um, John Steed, good morning. That's right. Good morning. I suppose the ministry warned you to expect me. Yes, I had a phone call half an hour ago. I must confess that I didn't really understand what it was all about. Oh, it's just routine, really. Uh, we have to check up, you know. Oh, quite. Well, um, won't you sit down? Thank you. Tell me what it's all about. Jarrett. <laughs> I beg your pardon? A man named Jarrett. Uh, not our department, uh, MI-12, actually. Uh, he's a spot security check man. That means he's given the right to call on any department without notice and inspect their security. He called here yesterday. He did? Yes, early. I want to know what time he left. But, but I know nothing of this, nothing at all. Jarrett, you say? No, that's right. I have a photograph here. Uh, here you are. I've never seen this man in my life. You sure? Quite sure. Just a moment, I'll ask Murray, his security personnel. He must have been consulted if this man called here. Webster reached for the phone, barked out an order, and a few minutes later, a young man entered from the inner office. You called me, sir? Uh, Steed, John Steed, called to do a routine check on a man from MI-12. Name of Jarrett, called here yesterday. And this is his photograph. Oh, yes? I'll be quite frank with you, Jarrett has disappeared. We know he was here at the Cypher headquarters early yesterday morning. Oh, I can't call it, Murray. As director of this HQ, I'm aware of everything that goes on. If I've been misinformed... I don't think you have, sir. I record all arrivals and departures. And you know nothing of Jarrett's visit? Not a thing. I most certainly didn't see this man in here yesterday. Or any other day, for that matter. Mm -hmm. Well, then perhaps he called later. Lunchtime, perhaps, when you weren't here. No, not yesterday. I didn't leave the building yesterday. The weather was so bad, I didn't go out at lunchtime. Neither did I. I'm sorry, Mr. Steed, but I think you'll have to accept the fact that this man, Jarrett, wasn't here. If he's disappeared, then it must have been before he was due here. And that's all we can do to help you. Mother. Steed here, Mother. Checked at Cypher HQ. Webster and his security man say Jarrett didn't visit them yesterday. Well, that's not the information we were given. No. I questioned all the staff, and they said Jarrett had never called at that headquarters, not at any time. But he must have done it sometime. Quite. Yet they deny it. And I'm quite sure they're all lying. But why? That, Steve, is something you must find out. And at once. Yes. Any news from Mrs. Peel? Uh, not yet. I could only hope that she'll be a little more constructive than you have been. She's at Jarrett's apartment with Ferret. 
Sherratt from MI12's forensic department prides himself on being a modern Sherlock Holmes. Oh. Right, I'll keep in touch. Uh, do that, Steve, do that. Ah, uh, now where was I? Oh, <laughs> yes, most important. <laughs> Delicious. In Jarrett's apartment, Ferret was going over everything in a thoroughly professional way. His methods were not to touch, but to examine in great detail. Mrs. Peel wandered about carelessly, picking up and putting down anything she chose. There's a postcard here. It reads, with all my love, Yvette. Oh, now that means assignment completed. Yvette is our man in Paris. You MI-12 people do go in for intrigue, don't you? Mm, very careless of Jared. He should have destroyed that immediately. Ah, Peters, have you finished photographing in the bedroom? Uh, yes, sir, just a few prints in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Right. And then cover that bookcase in the area around the door. I thought the best type of agents left messages concealed almost everywhere. Mm, there are messages enough. It's only a question of thinking things out. Such as? The bottle of milk in the kitchen is sour. So? The dregs in this teacup have gone moldy. So? The shaving rush in the bathroom is bone dry. Ingenious. So? Each one is a clue, Mrs. Beagle. All these facts add up to prove that Jarrett hasn't been in this flat for two days. Mrs. Peel, who had been wandering about the place looking under cushions, straightening the carpets and toying with the ornaments, strolled to the window. Beneath the window was a window seat, large and comfortable. She sat on it and stared out into the street. Then, on an impulse, she got up and raised the lid of the window seat. Yes, I think I can say without fear of contradiction that Jarrett left here on Sunday. I'm afraid not, Mr. Ferret. I beg your pardon. It would seem he didn't leave here at all. Look. Ferret moved over to where Mrs. Peel stood and looked down into the window seat. The sightless eyes of Arthur Jarrett stared up at him. Dead. Shot. You don't have to be a genius to ferret that one out, do you? In my day, hard, harsh rubbing was the way to shift grease off my old coal stove. What's changed? What's changed? Surfaces have changed. They can't take hard rubbing. They need Handy Andy care. Modern stoves and all modern surfaces need Handy Andy liquid cleaner with active ammonia. Use Handy Andy straight from the bottle. It lifts dirt without hard rubbing or scratching. Surfaces have changed. It's time I changed to Handy Andy, too. There's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Gray of Durban has this to say. Ah, uh, Colin explained it. it. It astounded me. I was really and truly very astounded. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.